So I'm actually very, very impressed with this one that there's nothing in there. That's actually kind of shocking me because I was actually expecting quite a bit of moisture to be inside that cylinder. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in our previous video, we did some gear testing that we actually started about three years ago where we went down and we created some catastrophic failures. And the reason we did that, once again, is we had a friend that ran out of air at 50 feet um, and he ran out of air very quickly. So he came in and told us his story to try to learn about why he lost air that fast so we did the test of course in 10 foot of water we calculated it down to 50 feet and of course we got results well you guys wanted to see more and i do apologize for it taking three years for us to revisit that but nevertheless if you hadn't seen that video click the link down below or i'll link it up here for you go check out that video because i think the numbers are going to be shocking on just how quickly you can lose air underwater but i also promised during that video that i would show you the inside of these cylinders so that you could see just how much moisture actually got in these cylinders after a dive where you completely drain that tank down. Something else that we're going to be talking about in this video is what do you need to do if you ever do drain your cylinder down? I know a lot of dive shops will tell you you need to come in for a uh, visual inspection anytime that the tank hits zero and they'll say you know always keep about one to three hundred psi in your cylinder so that no condensation or no type of moisture will actually get in that cylinder. Well we not only did we run these tanks down to zero we also ran it down to zero underwater. So let's take a quick look at the tanks and see exactly how much moisture accumulated inside these tanks and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end on whether or not these need to be visually inspected. All right, so I've only got two of the three cylinders that we used. I want to apologize for that. The aluminum 53 cylinder that we used, it was actually time for that cylinder to get hydroed. So I went ahead and sent it off for hydro uh, because I had several other tanks and I didn't want two different lots of tanks going out at two different times. So I went ahead and sent it off. But I do have the steel 50 and the aluminum 63 here. And I think this is going to be a good comparison between aluminum and steel just because we can see the corrosion difference as far as uh, oxidized oxidization in the cylinder um, between the two to see does steel rust quicker or does aluminum rust quicker and we also want to see how much moisture actually accumulated because you ha do have the o-ring here which is where your first stage goes and you have your neck o-ring as well but if you remember from the test that we did with this one, we were simulating an O-ring failure here, so there wasn't any type of seal. But when we did it, of course, we just opened the valve all the way up. Now, I want to see something else that we noticed in the video. Even though this tank stayed negatively buoyant, it did kind of go inverted during the test. That meant the valve itself was the lowest point. And thanks to Boyle's Law, then we know that some of that pressure is going to keep that water out. So I'm very curious to see how much moisture got in this cylinder uh, because it was inverted. And since there was nothing to block this orifice, um, I, I am curious to see that. But we're going to go ahead and start with the aluminum cylinder first. Now, I have already pre-loosened these valves. Uh, just to make it easier for time's sake here on the video, but I'm going to take it off real quick. And we're going to start with the valve itself and just kind of work down, see if we see any type of moisture or corrosion, um, and hopefully the tanks will be good. So as I pull it off here, I don't see any type of moisture around the valve. I don't really see any corrosion. I can feel quite a bit of silicone um, from the last time we visited this cylinder. So everything appears to be good there. And we'll move down to the valve itself. I'm not seeing any type of moisture around the, the valve neck here or the O-ring. I don't really see anything there. I'm gonna grab a quick light here and we're gonna stick it down in there and see what we can see here. Just see what moisture possibly got down in there. And I hope you guys can see. I'll try to get this light out of the way so you can see down in there. Just 
Maybe I can get zoomed in here. They're starting to focus. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's actually looking very good. I don't see any type of moisture down in there. It's nice, clean, shiny. I don't even see any water spots. So I'm actually very, very impressed with this one that there's nothing in there. That's actually kind of shocking me because I was actually expecting quite a bit of moisture to be inside that cylinder. Okay, get that valve temporarily. I am going to do a visual inspection on these because we do put these cylinders through uh, quite a bit. So I've actually got several here to do visuals on, but let's move on over to the steel and let's see just how moisture come out come or got in it during the test all right we'll start with the valve i see some discolorization i, I am feeling quite a bit of silicone still on the valve but i am seeing a little bit of discolorization there Yeah, we'll set that aside and let's let's look to I'm not seeing much inside the orifice there now to be honest with you this is not steel this is brass um, so we're not I don't think we're gonna see the rust form as bad on on this as what we are gonna see on the steel if there's any there so it doesn't look all that bad maybe take a toothbrush a little bit of water and vinegar Clean that right out should should clean up very easily. Moving on down here, we're going to look at the the valve neck first. And once again, I see some discolorization. If you look at the last two or three threads there, I do see some rust form. Hopefully, the camera will focus. There we go. So I am seeing a little bit of rust. Let's see if I can get any off of my finger. Got a little bit on there. Oh yeah, there's definitely some rust in that. Now it is just flash rusting. Um, it, it's just basically on the surface of the metal. It's not actually cut down into the metal. But yeah, I can definitely get some off on my finger there. Let's um, let's put a light down in this cylinder and see what it looks like on the inside. And hopefully the camera once again will focus for us. Try to do it and get this light out of the way here. See if it'll focus. Oh, look at the bottom there. See the rust down in there? Maybe that black spot right there. It's a little concerning. I'm going to stick a rod down in there and see if there's any pitting already occurred. Look on the side walls. Oh yeah. Definitely some flash rusting in there as well. Move on over. Yeah, so this, this cylinder here, by all means, definitely has a whole lot more... Uh, corrosion already started uh, from our little test. Now once again this was the cylinder that we just opened the valve on simulating an o-ring failure so we can definitely see in a steel cylinder um, that it definitely has already got some corrosion just from that little test. So there you go guys, that was one of the aluminum cylinders and the steel cylinders that we tested at depth. And as you can see, there was a little bit of corrosion in that steel cylinder. I was actually very impressed with the aluminum cylinder. I thought there'd be a little bit more moisture in there, but there was actually no moisture in that, in that cylinder at all. Um, as far as visiting these tanks, I'm going to go ahead and visit them for a couple of reasons. One, they need to be vis. That's another reason we kind of chose them for the test. But number two, just to be on the safe side, when we think of diving, 
we always want to be as safe as possible. That's kind of why we do gear tests. You know, we, we test our equipment every two years or every year based off the manufacturer. We get it rebuilt. We do pre-dive safety checks. So we do these things to say, stay safe and to keep myself, my staff, and my customers safe. I am going to go ahead and visit these tanks and get them back in service. I may even need to do some cleaning on that steel cylinder as well. But if you ever run a tank dry, now if you're just changing out a, a tank valve or something like that, you probably don't need a vis. But if you ever run a tank dry underwater, it can get moisture inside it and we don't want that moisture, especially on a steel cylinder. It doesn't take much for rust to start forming um, and it's only been a day since we did this test and you can see the rust already inside that steel cylinder. But guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I do want you to stay tuned. At the end of the month, our PCI PSI certifications come up for renewal and we're going to have the owner of PSI and PCI here and not only is he going to do a renewal for us we have some new staff members that he's actually going to come in and certify them to VS tanks too so hopefully we'll get another interview done with him um, and he can kind of explain um, more in detail about what visualizations are one of the questions we get a lot are is during a hydro test the tank gets vised so after the hydro test why does a shop have to revis that tank and so we're going to ask him we're going to find out what's the difference in the viz that a hydro facility does and what is the viz that a dive shop does but stay tuned for that video as well if you did like the video give me a big thumbs up definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business